Alright, so let's get out of the character screen and I can show you one of the really big additions to Soul Sacrifice Delta. This is what I call basically the lounge. It's like an NPC area. You can talk to four different NPCs and they give you more options for customizing your character's looks, power, and also give you some interesting options for connecting socially with other players in Soul Sacrifice Delta. A couple of these may be familiar to you. First of all, we've got this guy here, Bowman. And one of the great things about this lounge area is it gives you something that I really wanted from the original game, which is just a, just a place to talk to NPCs and to kind of just get a, a more interaction, more story and, and essence of RPG in Soul Sacrifice. That's what they've done with Delta. So you can talk with NPCs now. And they'll say a variety of things, fully voiced over, just like the original Soul Sacrifice game. And what Bowman has available for his options is he can sell you a variety of additional character customization options. So here you can unlock new colors for costumes. You can also unlock new costumes from him. You'll get a special kind of currency. I'm not exactly sure where it comes from. You will be able to get this currency from obviously completing quests and from killing monsters and things like that. And once you have enough of that currency or once you've unlocked uh, certain requirements, then you will be able to get different costumes from him which is really nice. There's almost twice as many, I think, customization options here for costumes. And there may be even more that are hidden away yet to be shown to me as I progress further into the game. Some of these are really wild looking too. Here you can also unlock headpieces as well for your character. Come on, who doesn't want a Gandalf hat? Very, very cool. Good stuff. There's one last option down here at the bottom, which seem to be quests, uh, special boss hunts that are available to get from Bowman. But not only do you get these boss hunts from him, he also joins with you, only him. So even if you have allies, they will not be included into the fight. You and Bowman go out and you hunt this monster, and I believe that this has some kind of tie into uh, your ability to better easily unlock new options from here, new character options. He probably will reward you in some way through those boss fights to uh, help you unlock uh, character customization options, is my theory. Alright, next up to his left, we've got a lady here who, just like Bowman, has some conversation for you. But this is probably one of the most interesting new options that you can do to your characters now. From this option here, what you have is a list of what seem to be enchantments. And you get these enchantments by fulfilling certain requirements. It may be uh, using certain spells, it may be killing certain monsters and things like that. But basically, as you do these, these things, she will give you these enchantments. And these enchantments do, of course, a variety of things. Everything from give you uh, more experience during a quest to allowing you to deal more damage to a particular kind of boss. So you may unlock, for example, a uh, you may unlock a a bonus to damaging harpy 
if you're going into a harpy boss battle. I've got a lot of these waiting for me. <laughs> So then, once you've got all of these enchantments, what you will do is go over here and talk to this fellow. He's got his own conversation option, of course, but this is where it gets really interesting. Over here, we have a list of all of the enchantments on the right-hand side. These are the enchantments that I've unlocked so far. And on the left-hand side, we have four slots. So obviously what you will do is you will take these enchantments and put them into the slots, right? And then that will empower you when you go out questing. Yes, but it's a little bit more uh, complicated than that. You see, these enchantments also come in different sizes. So while there are four slots on the left-hand side, some of these enchantments may take up more than one slot. For example, this experience boost enchantment. When I click on this, it shows me that it will take three out of the four slots if I decide to use it. So what I will then need to do or want to do is try to find a, a smaller enchantment such as this one and then I can place that because it, it only takes up one slot down there at the bottom. And I believe that all of these enchantments, or at least they seem to be temporary enchantments. The reason why I think that they are temporary enchantments is because I once used them, put them into the slots, and then when I came back, they had disappeared. Also, notice that I have more than one of the exact same enchantment. You see, I'm flipping through these three here, and they're all the same. So you will be able, if you want, to use enchantments, use them up, and then if you want the same enchantment again, then perhaps you can uh, fulfill the requirements again that you, you did in the first place to unlock the same enchantment. But this is a very interesting addition, I think, to Soul Sacrifice Delta. These other two options here in the middle are, to be honest, a little confusing to me. We have this first option here, which kind of reminds me of the ability to gift uh, items to our allies. You seem to be able to donate, uh, once again, your uh, extra spells that you have to him, and from that, he seems to reward you for uh, what you give him. I tried this one time and I got something back in return. I wasn't sure entirely uh, what it was. Um, it might have actually been the currency that uh, one of the currencies that Bowman asks for. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, down here there is sort of like uh, what's what's like a gossip option here so you can talk to him. He tries to gather intelligence for you, it seems, and then give that to you. But most of the time when I check this, uh, there's nothing. It, the interesting thing about it is that it goes online to check for this information. So I don't know if that has anything to do with maybe uh, the people on my friends list, or maybe that's part of the near function for the PlayStation Vita, which takes into account uh, people in your area, maybe, that are playing the same game as you. Again, it's one of those features that uh, I just don't have all the details quite uh, understood about yet. But very interesting overall. And this last uh, gentleman here on the right, he will talk to you, of course, and he has uh, the ability to allow you to post on Twitter. <laughs> you have two options here that you can post to Twitter uh, some of your statistics for that day and by doing so both of these options you will be rewarded with Librams tears and of course Librams tears as we know are used for a variety of things including but not limited to fixing broken spells changing your name changing your gender fixing your black ride spells and probably a number of other things so if they are giving away Librams tears via Twitter it seems to me then that perhaps Librams tears are even more valuable than they were in the original game, or perhaps uh, not as easy to acquire. Either way, I think that this is a, a kind of a cute and interesting way to help you kind of stay connected and share with uh, share with other people what you're doing in Soul Sacrifice Delta. 
there's another option here. I believe this is for using it near. And I can't do that because I'm not actually on my PlayStation Vita. I'm using the PlayStation Vita TV, uh, which uh, doesn't have all of the same applications, I don't think. But anyway, so you've got some interesting things here as well from this guy. And that just about does it overall for the, the lounge area. One last option here in the lounge is up in the corner, and this is a very interesting addition to the factions in Soul Sacrifice Delta. What you're looking at on the right side is a map with three flags, one for each of the factions, the red for Avalon, white for Sanctuary, and green for Grim. And the sizes represent how many players and how influential that faction is in all of Soul Sacrifice Delta. From this top option here, you can upload what faction you have been playing for, how, what kind of questing, and whether you've been saving, sacrificing, and all of that, and then it creates this display here to show the most influential faction, which is really, really neat. You can see, obviously, then, that a lot of people or a lot of very active players seem to be playing for the Grim faction. They've got the biggest flag. And to be honest, oh, I've been looking at this over the past few days and they seem to be just dominating. Uh, they are obviously the most uh, popular faction to be a part of right now. And for Avalon and Sanctuary, it's been kind of a tug of war back and forth. Uh, one day, the uh, the Avalon faction was uh, right behind Grim and Sanctuary hardly had even a flag at all on the map. But now it's going uh, more in favor towards uh, Sanctuary and Avalon seems to be in third. It's going to be interesting to watch this evolve over time and I would love to see this come over to the west in uh, play with people in, for example, North America and see you know, who joins what faction and things like that. Should be very, very interesting. From this page here, we have a couple of options. You start off in Soul Sacrifice Delta exactly the same as you do in the original game by uh, questing with Sor Tiara, and then uh, eventually you get to here, which are faction quests. And then you will have to complete these uh, three introduction quest lines before you can move on to uh, go questing with uh, Magusar. I almost said Merlin, but that's the uh, that's the name from the Japanese version. Anyway, going back to here, like I said, you have uh, faction quests that you can participate in. I've unlocked a second level for Avalon. And that is probably because I've been the most active for uh, for their faction. So if you want to unlock more quests for each faction, you will have to play more uh, and represent, I think, that faction while you do uh, questing in general. From here we have, I think, neutral quests, much like the Avalon packs from the original game, if that's not exactly what this is. And there's a lot. <laughs> there are a lot of quests that you can do here in Soul Sacrifice Delta, much like you could in the original game. Obviously, I still have quite a lot to unlock, and hopefully, just like the original Soul Sacrifice game, they will uh, add new quests for free and new bosses for free like they did with the original game.